Yeah, you might have heard of the quantified self movement where you uh, wear a Nike fuel band or a Fitbit or something like that and study what you're doing when you're exercising. But uh, 10Xer has a way to do that at work where you can uh, study what you're doing and see patterns of how to improve yourself at work or uh, at programming or whatnot. And we're going to find out about it right now. Who are you? My name is Jeff Ma. I'm the CEO of 10Xer. Uh, I think the thing that people know me best for is I was the inspiration for the movie 21 and the book Bringing Down the House. Since then, I've started three different companies and written a book. Yeah, everybody in the office said, don't play blackjack against you. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, you know, that's a funny thing because you really don't play blackjack against someone else, right? You play against the dealer. So what we people really want me to do is go to Vegas with them is the, is the common claim that they want. Yeah, so do you hit on 16? Uh, it depends. You know, it depends <laughs> what the dealer has, right? If the dealer has seven, it, everything depends on what the dealer has, right? If you have 16 and the dealer has a seven or an eight, uh, you should hit. And then um, if they have a nine, a 10, or an ace, you should do something called surrender if it's available. But if not, um, you should probably hit. Very cool. We're not here to talk about blackjack. <laughs> it's a lot of fun in your history. How did you get from here and what are you doing now? Yeah, so, uh, you know, after the blackjack stuff, sort of after I gained the notoriety from the book Green Down the House and the movie 21, uh, I started looking at interesting fields of sort of where data and analytics uh, could be used to gain advantages. And so I started actually a company called ProTrade with a guy by the name of Mike Kearns, who you interviewed, he's over at Yahoo right now. And um, we morphed that business into a business called Citizen Sports and eventually sold that to Yahoo. And after that was done, I was looking for ways and, and interesting ways to use data and analytics in a new consumer business. I wrote a book called The House Advantage, which was all about how to use data analytics to make better business decisions. But what I found more interesting was how can you use data analytics to change consumer behavior, to change people's behavior? And obviously, as you were mentioning, like I started looking at the fitness space and the whole quantified self movement. And I thought, wow, this is pretty interesting. But the problem is that the lion's share of people out there don't want to be healthier, and they don't want to get in shape. So what ends up happening is that's a very niche market. And I said, what are some other places where this might happen? A friend of mine by the name of Neil Robertson, who started a company called Trotta, sent me a, a PowerPoint deck about the whole idea of the gamification of work. And he, it was based on some work that they were doing at Trotta at the time. And as I looked at that, I said, what if I combine these concepts with the idea of quantified self for work? So much of what we do in the workplace right now is measured. And it's measured you know, uh, in cloud-based services that now have APIs that we can access, whereas before, it might have been measured on a spreadsheet sitting on someone's computer or be sitting behind a firewall that wasn't accessible from the outside world. But with services like GitHub and Pivotal Tracker and Gmail and Twitter and on and on and on, there's great opportunities to extract large amounts of data about daily work habits of an individual. And what we want to do, rather than playing big brother, is actually take that data to help people get better at their jobs. So yeah. for me, I have a tremendous passion around sports. And I started thinking about the whole concept of sports statistics and how a guy that like Barry Bonds, you know, modified his workout regime based on chasing a number or a statistic and how numbers and statistics actually motivate people to get better at sports. Well, we don't know our stats at work, unfortunately. So how do we know if we're getting better? How do we have any idea how to get better? I mean, that's the story of what 10Xer wants to be is a way for you to measure yourselves and understand how to get better and understand if you are getting better. But and, and and we'll get into some of the stats that you study. One of them was lines of code yeah, that you write. Yeah. I, I I worked at Microsoft yeah. and, and and there was lore at Microsoft about uh, the IBM teams right. that they were competing with studied themselves by K lock or right. thousands of lines of code written right. every week or whatnot. Right. And um, and Microsoft guys said that's the stupidest thing to study yeah. because it's not about a thousand lines of code. It's about writing five lines of code that does something really great. When we, uh, when we started this business, and the vision of the business really is to reinvent the way that everybody works, not just software engineers. But yeah. as we we're starting to build out the product, I looked around and of course, like any startup, my first you know, five hires were all software engineers. So we had software engineers. We wanted to do you know, the Google dog fooding thing, the you know, eat your own dog food. and build a product that we would actually use. So we're like, let's build it for software engineers. Now that's a brilliant and a terrible decision. 
at the same time. It's brilliant because there are so many different places to grab data about what a software engineer is doing without creating any overhead for them. Because that's yeah. a huge principle for us is we don't want to change your workflow. So many of the personal productivity software tools out there the minute you start using them, they ask you to start entering stuff in. If you have to yeah. enter stuff in, how is that going to make you more productive? So what we want to do first is start pulling all this different data in. But now the problem with it is that software engineers are incredibly hard to measure via metrics, right? Yeah. We know lines of code committed is not a proxy for how good an engineer you are or even how productive an engineer you are. At times, you can sit around and, and you know the best solution may be the one that requires the least amount of code, the most elegant solution. And there's yeah. people that believe that the best, I mean, you know, I've heard really sharp engineering managers tell me they think that their best engineers are the laziest ones because they sit around and think about the most elegant solution to a problem. But lines of code committed combined with things like commits, with task resolved, with things like issues open, with issues closed, on and on and on, we collect all of that data. And so we believe yeah. we're at really step one of this problem, which is how to start collecting and exposing that data to people. Step two, step three, step four, step five is trying to give them actionable stuff to do around that data, or even to start um, clue, you know, mixing that data up in a way that uh, there's more information to it. So things yeah. like a metric, like as we we're talking earlier about, lines of code per commit. Is that something that you could use to actually help someone understand a workflow or to help them understand their own workflow or their own past history? You know, why do they have one outlier in terms of uh, having a lot of lines per one commit? What was the reason? And they can go back and a younger engineer can go to a, a more senior engineer and ask them, you know, why do you typically have this many commits? One of the guys that we uh, first worked with, an advisor to 10 xers is a guy by the name of Evan Priestley, and he built, he was at Facebook and started a tool called Fabricator. But one of the things that he talked so much about was how he wants people to commit more often, because then there isn't a pro if a problem comes up, you know, it's easier to trace back where the problem is. So that's a metric I think that you can optimize for. So again, like it's yeah. funny because people that have never even been on 10 xer that have just read articles about us, focus in on the whole concept of lines of code. And you know, of course it's, it's far from perfect, but again, it's like the sports analogy. It's like initially when, when uh, athletes started collecting stats about themselves, you know, there's at-bats and there's hits and there's walks, but then Moneyball came out and they figured out that there were better stats to actually measure them by. We're at the point where we're just sitting there finally collecting the stats about workers. What else are you studying? What, what kinds of things yeah. are you uh, hoping that I use it for? Because I'm so, not a coder, right. I'm just a general. So an interesting thing is people ask, well, what verticals are you going to go into next? Yeah. And the way we don't really necessarily look at it that because we're trying to build a platform that's universal, i.e. you plug a data source into it, it gives you metrics. We use those metrics to you know, incent behaviors or to help you be better at your job or to create social collaborative feature, whatever it is. So we look at it not in terms of the verticals that we're servicing, but more in terms of the services that we're integrating with. So right now, be it that we're integrating with GitHub and Pivotal Tracker and Jira, we're servicing mostly software engineers. But one of the next services we're adding is Twitter. So right away, someone like yourself and someone like me who spends so much time on Twitter now trying to promote the product, trying to see what people are saying about the product, trying to get more followers, trying to get more retweets, we can look at metrics like you know, like you could, uh, one, our lawyer, this guy, Buddy Arnheim, who's at Perkins Cooley, I was telling him about this and he goes, you know what, I found that a lot of my counterparts in the Valley use Twitter more than I do. And I would love to sort of get, you know, best practices and, and kind of like a benchmark of how often I should be tweeting each week and have a, be able to set a goal each week where I, you know, go towards that goal. And that's kind of what we're trying to do. And again, like the idea of advanced metrics, you know, we want to look at things not just at like the number of tweets or number of followers you have, yeah. but a ratio, like the number of retweets you get per tweet or the number of at mentions you get per follower or whatnot. whatnot. So um, we want to expose this data in a way that helps everyone you know, get better at what they're doing. Wow. What, where else, what, what else do you guys sit around dreaming that you could study? You know, and, and you know it's, it's, it's not just studying. So, so studying is a big part of it. Like yeah. today I met with a, with a guy who was a PhD in econometrics and whatnot, and we we're kind of getting into some real geek out stuff on the things we can study. But it, it isn't even just that. It's the types of experiences that we can create around this data that really interest me. And they are like the types of things like that the ripples and the, like the success factors and the yammers have tried to do, which is create these social collaborative tools. But if we start at the core with metrics and events, that power these different experiences, I think it makes it more powerful. So in other words, in Ripple, you know, you can go and you can you can rate or you can thumbs up or you can, you know, appreciate something that someone's doing. Well imagine now you do it out around a real event. Like someone commits and you actually give them a star. Like in the 
you know, I'm a big sports fan. I keep using sports analogies, yep. but in the Ohio State, they have this concept of you can give someone a Buckeye, right? You stick a Buckeye on their helmet. Well, imagine that a developer is given 10 Buckeyes each month that they can give out to other developers. And every time that the commit comes, they give, you know, they think it's a big commit or they think it's a big, resolving a big task, they give them a Buckeye or two. And then at the end of the month, you know who got the most Buckeyes and you have a pretty good, cool peer review system where in the past, there hasn't been real good peer review systems. And it's like, again, it, the, those metrics and those events power that kind of a system, which to me is all of a sudden a lot more interesting than, having, than relying on individuals to populate that data and relying on, because no, we all know we don't want another thing to have to enter information into. Yeah. Do you think, uh, you know, Nike has a fuel band or Fitbit has a thing that goes on my pocket or whatnot that, to study me as a, I move through the world and try to motivate me, motivate me to go right. do more running, yeah, more, yeah. more walking, yeah. whatnot. Are we going to wear something at work? To yeah, well, you know, Nike <laughs> Plus is a, big, is a big inspiration for us. I think that we're, we're really uh, impressed with what they do and, and their way of trying to motivate people to be better. Um, there is just this idea of, like, creating mashups with things like, you know, Foursquare or with, with you know, uh, with um, Nike Plus or with Fitbit or, or whichever, where, where you're actually getting to see a little bit about how your physical behavior informs your productivity or how, I'm sorry, how it impacts your productivity. You know, the, the kind of joke is like logging how many drinks you have each night and seeing how that affects your productivity the next day. So, yeah. So, I mean, I think that that's a little bit down the road for us, but definitely, you know, we have like a big list of services that we want to connect with and Fitbit and those types of things are on that list. Do you, are you looking at uh, the kinds of inbound that people are, are, are uh, uh, attempting to, to, for instance, how many books they're reading or how many yeah, magazine so good articles? reads and those types of things are things that we're looking at. There are a lot of things that we could potentially plug into this, even, even tools like if you've seen things like Smarter or any of the certification type tools. Um, understanding like what this is about your work life and understanding how you're getting better and the types of goals that you're setting. Certainly reading, reading blogs, all that type of stuff. You know, when I, I talked to a, a friend of mine who runs Fin Agency in, in, uh, um, in San Francisco, and he was saying in terms of the, the interesting things, I asked him so early on, I was like, what do you want your junior PR people to be doing? And he says, I want them to be writing and I want them to be reading. Well, imagine you were able to like, create a way to track how much they're writing and they have a way to sort of do this whole blog and you, other people can rate it. And then you have a way to track what they're reading. You know, you, you integrate with something like a rescue time or something that actually sits there and monitors what websites they go to, how much time they spend on it. And they're given incentive or they're given, you know, this idea of, of yeah, I spent this amount of time because he wants them spending a lot of time on, you know, on blogs and reading blogs, reading yeah. your, your blog, reading TechCrunch, reading whatever it is. and and. Um, that's the way as a PR person you're going to get better at your job. Now the problem with a lot of those tools is without context they mean nothing. Yeah. But if you know that this is a you know, junior PR person who you want writing and reading, it means a lot. So you integrate on the one side with you know, rescue time and on the other side with WordPress and you have this whole concept now of what they should be doing in their job and a way to create a, you know, a, score, a scoring system or you know, a, a personal analytics dashboard where they understand how much they're doing, how much they should be doing. Um, and, you know, their bosses can help them understand, you know, how their behavior should change. One thing that led me to change my career and get to where I am is uh, I, I'm always trying to um, do scalable work. And what do I mean by that? If I answer uh, an email from you, right. it's one to one. Right. It's not very if scalable. I answer uh, a Quora right. question, right. it's scalable because... Yeah. And you plus N yeah, people yeah, can find yeah. it on Google and yeah. get value out of that. I think what you're almost talking about is like normalizing or creating a point system around the type of work you do. So an email, sending an email might be worth one point, but sending a, a, sending a tweet might be one times the amount of followers you have, or um, uh, you know, a core question might be even more because of how many web hits they get on, the, you know, visitors they get on their website, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think that type of thing is, it's probably like, third or fourth generation for us in terms of where, where we're going to be uh, because it's a compli it's a little bit of a complicated concept. Like what we need to do right now is focus on simplicity, right? Make metrics that people understand that they can clearly use. You know, like if you think about something like cloud, it's a wonderful service, but the problem with it is it's a little bit too esoteric in terms of how do I understand how to improve my cloud score? Yeah. And it's it doesn't incent, you know, I, I have a 55 cloud score, but I have no idea how I got that and I would love to have a higher one and, and whatnot. And I know that certain things I do, well, but that's not the, the point of cloud, right? Cloud is a measurement system. It's not necessarily a, an incentive system or a 
productivity system and, and what we are is different. So when we do our Twitter analytics, it's not going to be necessarily first around quantifying how much reach you have. It's going to be first quantifying all the different things that you do and quantifying your behavior. But down the road, certainly we can go into things like quantifying your true reach or, and whatnot. Again, it's all about step one, collecting the data, getting into a place, and then you know, getting some really smart people to sit around and play with the data and create you know, great mashups or visualizations or, or meaningful information and insight out of that. Well, it's going to be fun to, wa to watch you uh, discover this new world and see how you compare to like geek list where I brag about what I do. You know, oh, I did a video that did this. You right. Know? You're actually going to be watching what it what the unit yeah. of work actually was. And I think I that one of the things that people get excited about when they think about us is like, how do you how do you take this to the next level? And now we've become a, a real baseball card for your work. And we actually that's a baseball card that you can take to your next employer and show them what your value was and what you actually did and is validated. It's like it's the same reason that people love to hire. Um, engineers that do a lot of open source contribution because they have some idea of what they've actually done and how much they've actually contributed. You know, down the line, hopefully we have enough data where we can help people solve that problem of who's the best to hire. Yeah. How, do you get, how are you going to make money with this? Uh, we're not interested in that. Yeah. No, I mean, I think that there's a lot of ways that we can do it. Um, yeah. It's just p picking the right way. And, and you know, one of the, the most simple ways is really out of freemium, right? There, we think that there are some tools that we'll always provide for free for you, but there are some tools that we think could be more premium services, things like collaborative tools, things like a deeper analysis of what you're doing, uh, things like more real-time data versus you know delayed data. There's there's a long list of these things, and we're so far away from being able to test these, or far away from testing these, um, that that we have a little ways before I would put a stake in the ground about the right way to do this. But you know, even still, like as I was saying, imagine we got to a point where this was so good that we actually had great. Uh, data on every individual worker and we can give you benchmarks on things. We could sell that data to people. We could sell the recruiting data to people. There's there's yeah. a lot of opportunities. It's just a matter of picking the right one. And, and, and you know, to be fair, like we're so far, I mean, we, we just launched and we're still in like a public beta where um, we're, we're just trying to figure out, you know, trying to learn as much as we can. Like I tell my guys every day, the biggest thing that we can do is learn. I don't care about yeah. the amount of users we have or, you know, I obviously care about the engagement more than anything, but I just want us to be able to learn from everything we do. Yeah. How are you funded? Uh, we're funded by Google Ventures, True Ventures, and Radar Partners. So, Smart people. Uh, yeah, great people. Uh, the, the first round... You might have taught them some uh, blackjack. <laughs> the first round was uh, Radar Partners led, and Kevin Compton is on the board. Yeah. So Kevin's an amazing guy. And um, it's, uh, it's, been a great, um, it's been a great run, and they're great people to work with. True has been unbelievable, and Google Ventures also, too. So. Very cool. Well, thanks for coming out and yeah. uh, giving me... I'm going to sign up for it because it, it's interesting to see what you're going to measure and what, you, what I'm going to learn about myself. So. Yeah. So, Thank you thanks. so much. Where do thanks I learn by? Uh, by the way, where do I learn about at it? At 10xer.com, T-E-N-X-E-R.com. And it's an ode to the idea that the top engineers are 10 times as productive as the average engineer. So we're trying to make everyone a 10xer in work, rather whether they're an engineer or a marketer or a writer or whatever. Very cool. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm.